If you like this podcast, then consider checking out the other great podcasts at metalsharkstudio.blogspot.com. Max Level Headphones will be your watch show. the show who explores the world of podcasting to bring to light shows we find entertaining, worthwhile, and important. Take our views as our own, as your opinions can and probably will be different. And if they are, please contact us at earwashow at gmail.com to tell us why. Welcome back, everybody. It's earwash time. I know I got my wash rag ready. And uh, my buddy, Andrew, he's got his earwash, his washcloth Ready as well. Andrew, how you doing? I, I prefer Q-tops, Q-tips and, and alcohol, and I just really get in there and just and just really make sure everything is decontaminated because I, there's just so many podcasts going in and out of there. You know, you know, you don't know who's been up in there. There's some nasty ones sometimes. Yeah, and, and this is my co-host, Blake, everyone. Say hi, Blake. Hi, Blake. Hi, Blake. Oh, me. Well, how was your week? Oh, um, hit and miss here and there. Little little bit of exciting changes seem to be coming down the pike. You know, I said last week the wife has a bean growing inside of her. Um, but I don't know if I should be mad at me for sharing this or not. But we actually got some pretty scary news that uh, both of us are carriers of the gene that causes cystic fibrosis. So there's a, there's a chance that our offspring, a, uh, it's a low chance, 25% chance according to the genetics Punnett square, whatever those code things are. Right. But we got some bad news that we, you know, there's a chance that our, our baby might be getting some uh, cystic fibrosis upon birth. So uh, we're, we're just crossing our fingers and trying to stay positive, doing a little research to see what will go into treating that or whatever we'll, we'll have to do if that happens. But, um, and other than that, I've got a, a job interview on Tuesday for the All Indiana right. State Department of Toxicology. So uh, we'll see if that goes well. You know, we're kind of hoping that it does, and kind of hoping that it doesn't, because right now, since I make so little money, we're actually getting a pretty good um, uh, financial aid from the hospital for the for the baby coming. So if I get a better job, then all that will disappear. So. Oh no. Yeah, we'll we'll see what happens here. It might be a godsend if I don't get the job. So we'll see. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I heard you. I heard you went to a play today. I did go to a play today. I went to a, a children's production of like a community theater production. Of um, the Wizard of Oz, I think most people were you know 12 or under, so it was mainly kids, and uh, lots of us, you know the Munchkins were little little kids, probably five, four or five years old, little ones. And it was really mm-hmm. cute. I only had mm-hmm. a, a couple problems with it. You know, it, it's kind of crappy to pick and you know pick out a, a kids production of a play. Right. But uh, you know how in the Wizard of Oz, all the people, the farmhand she meets. Um, early on in the movie, uh, they end up being the Scarecrow, the Lion, and the Tin Man, which as, when I was a kid, I loved The Wizard of Oz, and I watched it over and over again. But I never realized that until I was a little bit older, that, oh, wait, hey, the, those farmhands were actually the Scarecrow, the Lion, and the Tin Man. Oh. And uh, I never realized that for a long time. But uh, my <laughs> one of my problems with the the children's production is the people who played the farmhands at the beginning of the play and at the end of the play were not the same actors who played the lion, the tin man, and the scarecrow. And I assume that's because of a uh, you know wardrobe and makeup changes. All right. And, you know the uh, the the actress who played uh, the Mrs. Gulch or whatever the witch's name is was not the same actress who played the witch and that sort of thing. And the you know the Mr. Marvel, Professor Marvel, who turns out to be the wizard at the end, was not played by the same actor who did that. But that's just getting, you know, a little too picky if you have to uh, point stuff out like that. But it was great. The kids all had a good time. They sang basically the same songs that were in the uh, the original musical, which I, you know, I, I still adore that movie. My wife got me the 75th anniversary Blu-ray a couple oh, years right. ago for my birthday. It was a good time. Were there people making pictures out in the audience? 
Uh, yeah, they were told not to, but there were still tons of parents, you know, busting out their digital cameras. And there were actually, I don't know if she was hired by the production company to take the official photos, but there was a lady with like a 12 inch telescopic lens <laughs> sitting right next to us, and you could just oh. hear the shutter going basically the whole the whole play. And it was kind of weird. They they dropped down a um, a, a projection screen behind, and they were very minimalistic on the scenery that was actually on stage, and they just kind of did their scenery by projecting pictures onto this screen, which huh. was kind of cool, because they used some of the same pictures and stuff from the actual movie, which I doubt they contacted Metro Goldwyn Mayer <laughs> to, to get the rights to do that. All right. But I don't know, maybe it's a public domain at this point. I don't know if Wizard of Oz is or not. You know, there's one thing going to some of the the band performances and different plays that the kids do in school. I try to count while we're there, just pointed out to my wife at how many people are holding up tablets, making making pictures or recording with the tablet. Videos, you see the yeah. tablets there, because I don't know. It's just, for some reason, that shit just unnerves me to all in to see somebody holding a tablet up. You know, making making a picture or recording a video. I was like, you couldn't bring anything smaller. Yeah, they, you know they have an iPhone or a, a Google phone in their pocket, an Android or something. They bringing a whole tablet's just kind of that's almost showing off. Yeah, I told my wife next time I'm going to bring my computer monitor, just hold it up. Yeah, just bring just bring your whole 65 inch digital TV. That's right. Hold that shit up with a GoPro on the top of it. Just <laughs> hold hold that up over my head. Yeah. Six people behind me can't see. Oh, hey, speaking of kids' productions, I really enjoyed your daughter on uh, Max Max uh, Max Level this week. Yeah, yeah, she she's asked me more than once. She said, well, can I be on your podcast? Can I be on the podcast? And I've tried to find a section to, to fit the kids into. And two, two things that always interest me are what are the you know, kids playing and what are other adults playing? And... I brought her brought her in here in the office, and she was getting ready to record, and she was confident, and she was ready to go. So we got ready to record that section of the show, and I said, you know, are you ready? And she said, yeah. And I did the whole little introduction, you know, this is Anna. You know, Anna, what have you been playing? And she froze up. Of course. And then, <laughs> all right, we'll try it again. So we tried it again. You know, this is Anna. Anna, what are you playing? And she just starts giggling. And I said, well, you know, what's the matter? She said, I, I don't know. I just, I just can't do it. And I said, why, why not? She said, I, I don't, it's, just, it's just scary. I just can't do it. And then she was getting ready to like walk out of here. And I said, well, look, just pretend that you're just talking to me. And you're just talking to me through this microphone. And she said, oh, okay. So like the, the sixth take, she finally was comfortable enough to, to uh, record herself. So, Well, that's great. You, you couldn't tell. She sounded, you can tell her I thought she sounded very professional, very good. And I, I expect her, not just want to, but I expect her to uh, start being a, a regular on the show. Well, I'd love for her to, but you know, there's only a handful of games that they'll play over and over again, and then you know, it's just. Well, she can, them. she can, you know, it doesn't have to be a new game. She can give you updates about what she's done since the last time. You know what I mean? Right. She can you would remember. Be, you would be proud of my oldest daughter. I popped my head in to tell him that you know, we were about to record the Earwash show, and if the house is on fire, then by all means, come get me. But if Otherwise. not, then, you know, just I need a, I need about an hour or so. But looked in there, she's playing Skyrim. Oh, wow. Yeah, she said, how do you open the map? I showed That's her, and awesome. she said, okay. I said, she uh, right. playing on Xbox, I assume? Right, and they're on the 360. Yeah. yeah. Nice. That's really cool. I, I'm proud of your eldest, too. Get your oh, yeah. eldest on the show on max level to have, have her describe some of her Skyrim adventures. See what she thinks of it. That's really awesome. Yeah, I'll tell you off air what she did uh, the first time she started playing it because it was, I don't know, it's one of those things where it's, it's not really a mistake, but it could be a mistake on your first playthrough. So, uh -huh. Man, cool, uh, it, it was ridiculous the first time you played Skyrim. I had no idea what to expect or what was going on because I didn't play Oblivion at all. I mean, that's... I just started at it cold, and it's overwhelming to just kind of jump into that game. Yeah, yeah. The I first... didn't even realize that there was a storyline to follow. I didn't realize that they were giving you assignments. I didn't realize there was a menu telling you where to go. I was just kind of wandering around aimlessly, being like, "What is happening?" Yeah, the first I think thirty minutes of my first playthrough, I hated it. I yeah. said, "I don't know what's going on. Did I miss? I should have played these other games. I don't know what this is." Yeah. And then just kept playing, and finally realized there's a story to this game, and. 
it just kind of went from there. And now I'm on my second playthrough of it. Is today the 19th? Today's the 19th. Today's the 19th. Oh, behind the curtain recording day. Um, I was talking to Michael on one of the interviews I did um, on the uh, Skyrim Attic podcast. Um, I, I did two like full-length uh, episodes with him, and on the first or second one, he was asking me how long I'd been playing, and I actually popped open my disc and looked at the receipt that was still in the case, and it was July 19th when, when I purchased it last year. So this is my official one-year anniversary. Of Happy anniversary. Sky. Yeah, it's a... It's been a crazy year, and I've only bought one other game since I purchased Skyrim, so it's actually been better for my pocketbook that I invested in Skyrim than any other video game because I haven't had to purchase any others. Let's say you paid, what, 60 bucks for the game. Let's say you paid full price, and then you bought the DLC for it, but you played it for a year straight. So I'd say you got your, you've got your money's worth out of that game, huh? And even more money's worth is I got it for $28 used, and I got the DLC on a Christmas uh, sale on Amazon for uh, $15 for all three of them. So I've nice. basically spent you know about 40 bucks, $45 maybe, on, on everything. So yeah, even more worth my while. That's good entertainment. And the other game I bought was the Batman Arkham Origins, and I, I, I played like 10 minutes of it, and I was like, oh, I'm going to go back to Skyrim. <laughs> well, I don't blame you. Yeah, what have you been getting into? Oh man, let's see. This week, my wife, uh, you know, she started working, so that's been nice. She, oh, that's she, great. She's been working uh, evenings, so that's given me more free time in the evenings. It was coming home and just editing shows, and that was pretty much it. And now I've actually got time to play some games again, so I'm excited about that. Yeah, your max level was just kind of running thin. I remember you saying that uh, you didn't really have time to play your games that for your for your video game podcast anymore. Yeah, I said I didn't play anything. I don't know what to talk about. Yeah. But I like the inclusion of the, the new guys into the show. That's really cool. you got Benedict on the news and Colin on the new games. That's really nice. I like hearing hearing people from across the pond... Yeah, I told I told Colin, I said, now when you do the gaming, you know, the, the new game releases, I said, at first she told me, I said, well, I don't really know anything about games. And I said, that's exactly what I want. Yeah. I want you to tell me what you think the game's about. I said, if the art, you know, that you see with, you know, with the description of the game looks, you know, just crazy, just tell me what you think the game's about. You know, and then maybe you know read the actual description of what it is. I said, and if if you don't like it, you don't look like it's gonna it's gonna be something to entertain you, then that's what I want to hear. You know, you know, like I don't I don't know what this is. I don't I'm, I'd never play this. I said, make it as cynical as you have to make it. That's amazing because cover art you don't really realize, but it really does play a huge role. You know, just the graphic design of everything. When you pick up a game, you like you pick up the case just because of the way it looks, and then right. you flip it over to read the game description. But always the initial impression is is gathered from the the actual graphic art on the front of it. And you'd be surprised how many just terrible rock albums I've purchased over the years just because I thought, ooh, this looks pretty cool. Right. Why, don't I, why don't I pick this up? And you know, it just turns out to be terrible. But now with the internet, you can always listen to stuff before actually purchasing, so that's cool. I know, isn't that great? Yeah. You can hear that first 30 seconds for free. Yeah. Wes, I heard uh, in the middle of the week, my phone went off with email notifications. So I heard, oh, yeah? We got emails. We do have some emails. You want to do the wiretap? Let's get into the wiretap. We take suggestions and we listen to your crap. Everybody gather around for the Earwash wiretap. And welcome to the Wiretap segment. It is our listener feedback segment. So uh, we got a couple of emails this week, and uh, we'll start off with uh, Carlos Ruiz. Sorry if I butchered your name. Carlos Ruiz. Um, Carlos says, I've been listening to the show called Self-Indulgent Podcast. It's great. It's a weekly comedy show, and it's hilarious. Bits, funny conversation, heated arguments, it's all there. The link is www.selfindulgentpodcast.com. This, this, blah, blah. This is the episode I'd suggest checking out. The Basic Wolves. And it's, uh, looks like it's episode 201. Real Rich is the guest. 
tells crazy stories, and then rightfully freaks out on a caller that makes fun of his kids. They have a ton of short excerpts at their sh- of their show at www.youtube.com slash selfindulgentpodcast2. Thank you for your time. And we thank you for your for your email there, Carlos. Oh, thanks, Carlos. We'll, uh, we'll check that one out, and we'll have a review for that on the, on the next show. Yes, I've actually already downloaded the, that episode he suggested on my listening device. That's great. And I was actually wanting to get in a little bit with you, Blake, about what makes a podcast worth listening to like what are the if you're cooking up a podcast what are the 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 main ingredients that you have to have in order to to uh, make that so uh, think about that for a second while I get into our next email here all right okay our next email comes from Eric Gaines and he says hey there I saw your post on reddit about looking up for podcasts to listen to and review I would love your opinion on my show it's called Eric and the Legion, and it's an audiobook-style read-through of the Legion of Superheroes comic books, beginning with their first appearance. You can find it in iTunes by searching Eric and the Legion, or by going to ericandthelegion.podbean.com. Thanks in advance for your input. Uh, thank, well, thank you, Eric. Eric, for writing in. You will, uh, we'll definitely check that one out as well. Yeah, I've got the first... It seems like those are shorter episodes, maybe 10, 15 minutes apiece, so I've got the first three of those downloaded, so I'll definitely try to get to listening to those this week. Yeah, this weekend, or this last week, you know, come Thursday again, I was uh, empty, and I made some changes to my list. When we get into the feed, I'll, I'll fill you in on all that. Sounds good. Um, well, what makes a, What makes a good podcast, huh? Yeah, what do you think? What are some of the if you're cooking a podcast at home in the kitchen, what are what are the basic ingredients, the main things it has to absolutely have in order to make it worthwhile? Well, number one, I'd say you have to know your topic. Like on max level, I do a lot of research about games. If if I don't know about a game, either A, I'll let you know it's something that interested me, but I'm not a hundred percent sure, then I'll let try to let everybody know that I'm not a hundred percent sure, but I try to keep at least my facts straight about what I've read or, you know, what I've heard somewhere else. Uh, community feedback, I think, is always good. Like the emails we get, uh, the community feedback for Skyrim Addict is, is phenomenal. Uh, max level is lacking for some reason. I look at the numbers, I see how many downloads it gets, and I feel like I'm just, I don't know, preaching to a bunch of mutes sometimes. It's, you know, I'll ask for feedback but hear nothing. But, ding, you know, ding, 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 ding. I think that is the most, mainly, and most important um, aspect of doing a successful podcast is not just getting feedback from the listeners, but having the hosts interact with the listeners, getting, you know, reading an email, talking about it on Twitter or Facebook. Just, I, I you know, I listen to a lot of podcasts, but I find myself going through phases where I would just love to death a podcast. And I was thinking, why am I liking this podcast so much right now? Oh, it's because they liked my post on Twitter that I said, oh, hey, everyone should listen to this podcast. That's really, you know, that makes up the bulk of why I like something is if someone acknowledges the existence of the listeners out there. It's, I think listener interaction is way more important than basically any other aspect of a show. Yeah, right. you nailed it right on the, you know, right off top, you nailed it. And that's the thing is, I'll sit there and I'll talk games for twenty, thirty minutes, but to have no feedback a while, you know, about do you like this section of the show? Do you not like this section of the show? It, I, so I just say screw it, and I just keep going with it, and then watch the numbers, see how the numbers look, and if they start dropping off, I'll be like, well, there's something that in those episodes that somebody didn't like, or several people didn't like, but then you, it's hard to go back and pinpoint what it was. Now, if they don't let you know, exactly. Exactly. So, yeah. So I, I jokingly said that, hey, I, I'll send you a listener feedback to this, but I'm serious. I'm, I think I'm gonna send you in like a. Uh, what sort of feedback would you prefer on on Max Level? Would you prefer an audio file or an email? Either way. Awesome. Emails are good. I think I, I might. I think I blew the surprise, but I think I might try to look into sending you some sort of a. Uh, Listener feedback because I do listen to uh, Max Level. I do listen to your pod, your other podcasts too. So, All right, that's cool. And uh, we've got one more email that we can get to here, and this one's been in here a while, um, over a month now. Sorry, uh, Michelle, but we're just now getting to your email. 
It says, uh, hi, Blake and Andrew. Love the show, or I'm sure I will love it anyway. She actually sent us this email before we started recording the show. Uh, shh, don't tell anyone. Or I'm sure I will love it anyway. A podcast about podcasts. So meta. The vast majority of my podcast consumption happens in my car on my commute to and from work. I tend to listen to things that are related to my nerdly interests, gamings, movies, etc. Some that I listen to nearly every episode are A Skyrim Addict, The Indoor Kids, The Chatterbox, and I'm working my way through the back catalog of Welcome to Night Vale. Others that I listen to when the subject interests me are The Nerdist, Oh No, Ross and Carrie, Girl with Guy... Oh, Girl on Guy with Aisha Tyler, Slumber Party with Allie and Georgia, and Harmontown. I'm looking forward to adding the Earwash Show podcast to my list. Good luck, guys. Michelle. And thank you very much, Michelle, for sending us your feedback as well, and I've actually heard of most of those shows she's mentioned. Uh, oh No, Ross and Carrie, I, I'm not familiar with that one. Me either. Uh, Slumber Party with Allie and Georgia, I'm not familiar with. I have heard of Girl on Guy with I have heard on Girl on Guy with Aisha Tyler, and I do enjoy her. I've heard her, um, you know, as a guest on other podcasts, but I don't know if I've ever actually listened to an episode of her show. Maybe a couple. And Harmontown, I know, is by Dan Harmon, the uh, producer and writer of Community, but I'm I haven't actually listened to an episode of his too. I actually suggested to you that you listen to another episode of. uh, the Indoor Kids, where Dan Harmon guested and talked about Skyrim. I remember, I, I don't know if you actually got around to ever doing that or not, but uh, Dan Harmon yeah. is, a, is a good, funny guy. So maybe I should check out Harmontown. But hmm. thank you for the email, Michelle. Yeah, thanks, Michelle. Well, all right, I got big news for the feed, so do you want to oh, jump great. in? Oh, great. Yeah, 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 man, let's get into the feed. You can find all the podcasts that you need when you listen to the Earwall feed. All right, welcome to the feed segment of the show. This is our, uh, our our segment of the show where we just talk about our regular subscriptions and uh, our highlights of podcasting this week, things that we thought were funny or just episodes we'd like to mention to each other or, you know, just highlights of what we thought was really cool this weekend while we were listening to podcasts. So uh, what you got, Blake? What's on your what's on your burner? I finally cut out uh, Major Nelson Radio for my podcast list. You you deleted it completely out of your I deleted it completely, yeah. And before I even got to listen to an episode to discuss with you. Yeah, he, I don't know, I saw two new episodes come out, I downloaded them, and then they kept getting pushed to the bottom of the list, and when it finally got to, it was listen to Major Nelson or just listen to music on the, you know, on my phone, I chose listen to music over listen to Major Nelson. So, so he's, was he's was gone. there a, uh, an event, a final straw that broke the camel's back? What 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 happened? Well, no, it's just I was thinking without having an Xbox anymore, there's really no need for me to hear him being asked to everybody else on the show to keep up with what's going on with the Xbox. That there's other gaming news outlets I can get that information from. So it's just more or less his attitude on there, just how he interacts with, especially with this guy named E. On there, the vowel. Um, <laughs> e runs the. Uh, he he he's pretty much in charge of you know the Xbox Live services. So just hearing how he talks to him, I was just I just got tired of it and just didn't want to listen anymore. So is he a big else is gone. He's just he'll cut him off, or if he starts going off topic, he makes him just sound like an idiot for going off topic. And I don't know. I just I couldn't couldn't stand it anymore. So Major Nelson Radio has gone off the. Off my subscription list now. Well, that's great. I'm proud of you for uh, evolving your your podcast feed. That's really nice. Right, and you know, trying to trying to cut out the majority of them. You know, at one time were gaming podcasts. I'm trying to weed through and keep just the ones that I like the most. Which I think now it's it's down to two gaming podcasts. Wow. Yeah, yeah. I've cut out three. I think total. I think there's yeah five total that I was listening to. And started uh, broadening my horizons a little more. So, and he was he was the last one to get cut. The other two will hang around. I'll keep them. I like those. But uh, yes, bye bye, Major Nelson. But the other one I listened to is called a uh, Signed In Podcast, and it's also a 360 podcast or Xbox focused podcast. One of the hosts will play games on Steam as well, especially when they they run out of you know new stuff coming out on the 360. But uh. 
I like the way they interact together. You know, they they give each other a hard time, but it's it's, it's all in good fun. So they they took uh, Major Nelson's place. Signed and, signed in was that what yeah. did you say? Signed in podcast. Signed in podcast. Awesome. I know in the last episode you had me listen to that episode of Doug Lowe's Movies with uh, Joey Coco Diaz in it. And oh, I yeah. Talked about, I talked about how, I, you know, I looked and I found out that he had a podcast himself, and I was going to listen to a couple episodes and check it out. Now, I, I don't know if the episode that I just picked at random was maybe just a bad egg episode. You know, maybe it wasn't the best one in the bunch. But the, I'm listening to the episode, and he's got a guest on with him. And I assume the guest is another comedian, and they're talking to each other, and they're like, "Hey, do you remember, do you remember uh, Sully up at Yuck Yucks up in Jersey? And yeah, you know he died." And it's just like they're just having a conversation. I don't know who these people are or what they're talking about, and I kind of it, it wasn't enough to hold my interest, you know? Yeah. So I thought, well, maybe I just picked a a bad episode. Well, uh, that's part of his format as he tries to get a, a call-in guest. Was it a call-in guest or was it someone in the actual studio? Oh, yeah, it was somebody in the studio with him. Okay, that's that's slightly different than usual. Usually he'll have a call-in guest, but yeah, he, he will call a lot of people for just from his childhood, people he knew as a teenager, and they'll just chat about the old neighborhood and, uh, you know, do you remember going to this and doing this and this heist we pulled, how we we stole all this money from this old woman or, like, how we... We hustled this old dude or something like that. Uh, but, you know, I'd, I've actually have to admit it's it's fallen out of my regular subscriptions as well. I don't know if it was a phase, but uh, Joey Diaz actually gave me a lot of... Uh, he influenced me to start losing weight because he was very influential... Um, and just the way he spoke, it was just like, yeah, don't tell it. Nobody can tell you what to do. You're the boss of your own domain. Get out there, grab life by the balls. Get out on your elliptical and sweat <laughs> out an hour. And you know, no one can tell you shit. If you're not licking someone's dick today, or it's like, if someone's not licking your dick today, then you haven't succeeded. And you know, which is all kind of like gruff and and sort of weird. But it kind of hit home for me. Like, you know, if if this fat dude can, you know lose weight and, you know, be active every day and exercise, you know, why can't I? So I started listening about in February, and it got me on the road. Of, you know, I, I make it a habit of getting on the elliptical for 30 minutes every day and walking the dog around the block after that. So I try to be active for at least an hour every day. And I have actually can tap it back to Joey Diaz in particular for, for that specific change in my life. So I do owe him that. Well, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Heck, yeah. Well, he's definitely got a motivational voice, especially if he was mad at you. Could you imagine yeah, that? Yeah. I love his accent. You know, it's you know, he's oh, a yeah. good, yeah, it's good stuff. What would you think one... of the Flying Jew? Oh well, I heard very little of him on that on that one episode. Uh, yeah, maybe you should listen to one more episode where he where he talks to um, what's his name? I don't even remember his name. Talk, his his co-host, the Flying Jew. You should listen to one. Just maybe give one more episode. Uh, if there's one that doesn't have someone in the uh, in the studio with him, because I I like it when he talks to his co-host. It's they have a good interaction. Right, and I like I like Joey Diaz. I like what he's about. And like I said, I think I just got I just picked a bad episode to listen to. Yeah. Would um listening to people smoke weed get on your nerves? Uh, let's see. I know. I, I touched back on uh, Doug Lowe's movies. Uh huh. And I listened to the Weird Al episode. I know uh -huh. you put up on the Earwash Facebook page that Weird Al was going to be on with, uh, with Doug and uh, you know, if you're a Weird Al fan, to check it out. And I was like, well, that's cool. I like Weird Al. I liked Weird Al since I was a kid. So, yeah, I'll, I'll check that one out. And now it seems like in that episode, if you remember, there was a guy that came in. He had come in late to the show. Oh, yeah, yeah. That guy sounds. He's, I know, I can't remember his name, but he's a giant stoner, and you know, he sounds like a giant stoner, you know what I mean? He's got the total, oh, yeah. like, California, like, sto oh, I was late, <laughs> bro. Like, that that sort of voice going on. Yeah, yeah, I know who you're talking about. And uh, the thing is, if you win the Leonard Malton game, you get to come back as many times as you keep winning the game. Dude, so he won, like three, <laughs> he won, like, three weeks in a row, so he was oh, on wow. there. He was on there a bunch, right in a row. Yeah, but um, go ahead, sorry. 
Yeah, but it, I mean that doesn't that you know you said somebody smoking weed on a podcast that got on my nerves. Maybe he's yeah. just that kind of stoner. But you had me listen to the the episode, the Todd Glass episode too. Uh huh. And he talks about taking a break during that episode where he goes over and he said he'll take a hit of a joint and then he'll come back and keep doing the show. And to me, after after they took that break, and he, uh, he said when he came back, look, I went over there and I smoked way more than I was supposed to. <laughs> but when he came back, though, that episode, the episode with Jen Kirkman on it and everything, that the rest of that episode was just fucking hilarious after that. Yeah. And I, you know, I was into it, but it, just the guy on the uh, Doug Lowe's Movies podcast, I don't, maybe it's just, I, I don't know, he was playing the the stoner part way too heavy I guess or at least maybe I don't like that kind of stoner you know well um I was gonna say if you do enjoy Joey Coco Diaz and listening to people actively like not just sounding like they're stoners but actively smoking weed and talking about weed and their experience with it another show I listen to is um Getting Doug with High, which is also hosted by Doug Benson and my favorite episode of that show is uh where Joey Coco Diaz goes on. That's actually how I discovered Joey Diaz was mm-hmm. on Getting Dug with High. Um, and it, it was just great. I love... I mean, it, That's really what turned me on to him. It's, What's the, it's ep- episode 10, if, if, if anyone's interested. Episode 10 of Getting Dug with High is Joey Coco Diaz. What's the format of that show? Do they just sit around and talk and smoke weed? Or how, well, how does that show go? They start the show at 4.15... And by 4:20, they're smoking pot, um, usually through some sort of vape, vaporizer pen, which is provided by a um, a sponsor of the show. They have a couple different sponsors who provide their glassware and stuff, and and uh, they like give vape pens out to people as they're like, "Hey, you're a guest on the show." And then they talk about they have a couple different segments. It's like, you know, your high history is one of the segments, so you always hear about people's first experience or when they started smoking on the reg. And, um, you know, then they just basically talk about it in general. Then they have, like, a little news segment about um, it, the legalization process, about, you know, if it's medicinal. or I think Florida is about to – Florida and New York, I think, are the next two big states to vote on medicinal legalization. And uh, I think Alaska might go for just straight up legalization, not j- not even just medicinal. But they have a little news segment, and at the end, after everyone's always super stoned, they have this magician come on and do a magic trick for everyone. All right, <laughs> it's really funny. I don't know. I really like that show. I don't. I don't get to smoke anymore, but uh, it's it's a uh, it's a really cool show. I like it a lot. Well, did uh, anything happen? Anything worth note on any of the regular shows you listen to? I had just an outstanding week of podcasts this week. Um, From our Echo Chamber segment from last week, we were going to listen to the Echo Rift, and I listened to three episodes of the Echo Rift, one of them revolving around the new um, Planet of the Apes movie that just came out, and that was uh, a triumphant success. The um, There's two guys. One of them I enjoy significantly more than the other, but they're both pretty good hosts, and they're both pretty knowledgeable about movies, not just the content, but kind of what goes into it and the background of movies and the storylines that go into it and the production values and all that. So they're, they're interesting to listen to, hear talk about this sort of stuff. So the Echo Rift was really good, especially the, um, the Planet of the Apes one that we listened to. Um, also, um, how did this get made... I don't even remember what movie they did, but how did this get made? Have you ever heard of that show? I, I've seen it on the some of the lists as you know in top tens or top twenties. Yes, uh, one of my favorite um, comedic actors is Paul Shear, and he is uh, he was on Human Giant, which is a sketch show was a sketch show on MTV like forever ago. But he's also that. on The League. If you've ever seen that show on FX, The League about the fantasy football league. He plays the the guy that everyone craps on named Andre. And he's one of my favorite comedic actors. He's he's excellent. I like him a lot. But he has a podcast that he hosts with his wife and also comedic actor Jason Man or uh, yeah, Jason Manzukas, who's also on the league. And they just talk about um, really bad movies and they'll watch the movie and then get together and discuss the movie. And I, I really, really like it. It's really funny. The last one they did was Mr. Nanny. Oh, that's right. It was a Hulk Hogan movie, if you remember that movie. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, Mr. Nanny. So they got together and, and ripped that movie apart for about an hour last time. And that was great. That was a, a big highlight. Um, also, uh, I've been going through a, um, a big phase this week with uh, Call Chelsea Peretti. And Chelsea Peretti is one of my favorite stand-up comedians. I think she is just absolutely hilarious. And um, she actually is on the new Fox TV show that kind of was the, the new hip kid at the, at the Golden Globes this past year called Brooklyn Nine-Nine. I don't know if you've ever seen Brooklyn Nine-Nine, but it's uh, when we were talking about starting a podcast, I was thinking of just things I could do, and I was searching for Brooklyn Nine-Nine podcasts, and no one was doing one yet, so I thought, well, maybe I'll just do an episode-by-episode episode, uh, podcast for that show, because I, I love it. I think it's hilarious. But Chelsea Peretti is on that show, and she's really funny, and I don't know what sparked it, but uh, I've just... I went back and I downloaded the first ten episodes again and, and listened to those this week, and it's just hilarious. The format is it's just her in a studio, and she has just random people call, just like her fans, basically, call in and talk to them. And she just, tongue-in-cheek, makes fun of these people the whole time and has these really <laughs> crazy drops, and she has all these cool sound effects and songs she plays, and it, it's really funny. I really like Call Chelsea Peretti. Um, also, We're Alive... I've been uh, going through yeah. that. I think I'm, I think I'm chapter six, maybe seven now. I listened to two or three chapters at work this week. I like that's that's like my Thursday afternoon after I've made it through most of the the stuff that updates weekly. I'll go back yeah. and uh, fill in a bunch of time with We're Alive. I've been enjoying that. They just went back and rescued the guy's uh, his puggle. I think it, he has a puggle. Oh, lady, lady, oh, exactly. Yeah. They just they just rescued lady, and right now they're. Uh, in a in a standoff with some people because they stole a, a gasoline diesel, all right, a diesel trailer truck, and they're trying to take it away, but they got held up by these people, and they're they're right now. I I stopped at the end of that chapter. They're in a standoff, so I'm I'm interested to see what happens there. The final uh, episode comes out tomorrow. Yeah, I saw that on Twitter. They're they're all sorts. Of, they're doing. Are they doing a live episode tonight? Right, they have gonna, a live event. I think they s were taking pictures of the lineup out front. Yeah, they're going to perform it live, and then they'll release it, you know, for purchase. Uh, I think on, uh, well, I know from their website. And then, uh, if if you don't want to purchase it, then at the end of the month you can download the episode for free. That's so right. Friday, you said that last show, yeah. Right. So Friday, I'll be picking up uh, the last episode of We're Alive. That's great. I'm, I'm glad that you can support them and by purchasing something like that. That's 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 really cool. Oh yeah, oh yes, yeah, it's, it's definitely worth it. All the the free entertainment they gave me, then I can I can afford the. I think it's like five bucks, and oh, it's yeah. oh, oh, a little, an hour or a little more of, of content. So yeah. for everything I, I wouldn't be surprised free, if the last it. episode might be a little longer too. You know what I mean? Because they're usually what like twenty minutes, ten minutes an right, episode. Yeah. 20, 20 minutes or so, yeah. yeah. Um, I Seem Fun, again, this week, uh, Jen Kirkman's podcast, she's just nailing it recently. I've, I've, I've really been in tune with what Jen Kirkman's been preaching. The I Seem Fun, the Diary of Jen Kirkman podcast is great. And what may have been the most epic comeback in podcasting history also happened to me this week was The Flap. Oh, we heard, right. We heard Dale discussed the flap on our last episode. Um, and, you know, it's just a podcast that he and his buddy, who also hosts the Paper Cake podcast, you know, they get together and and do the flap every once in a while. Well, it's been a full calendar year, at least, since they've put out a flap episode. And they just nail it out of the effing ballpark. It's, I, I loved it. They were talking about uh, Dale's interaction with a, a varmint that got into his into his garage, which is good. Oh, wow. And, you know, just some... his new exercising um, routines and stuff. I, it was just all over the place, but it was a really great episode. So everyone, uh, even if you don't like comic books, this has nothing to do with comic books like Paper Keg. This is just the flap, and it's about normal, everyday life with these two guys who are just dads with kids, you know? They, they discuss crazy things that happen in their lives, and the flap was it just again it just hit it out of the ballpark this week. It was really good. 
Yeah, I like to think that you brought that up during the interview. You were asking him about the flap, and he said it had been on on a hiatus. So I like to think that you had a lot to do with uh, this new episode coming out. I I would not, you know, begin to give myself that honor, but I would feel <laughs> tremendous if I had anything to do with the return of the flap because it is really just a great episode this week. What did uh, what did you what were your highlights this week? What did you get into? Um, since we're being controversial and talking about smoking weed, I want to go. I want to take it a step beyond. And I was listening to uh, Dan Savage, the Savage Love podcast. That's one of the ones I subscribe to. And during the opening of every episode, Dan will have a you know a little rant segment before he gives uh, love and relationship advice. And his his rant on this, I think it was the mo- is there this episode or the last the previous episode. And I think they kind of got bunched up, but I listened to it, you know, this last week. But he was talking about uh, the Pride Parade in, I think it was Washington State, I think is where they had the parade. Well, let me set it up this way. I'd watched a video somebody shared on Facebook, and they're getting ready to start the parade, and these, these Christian protesters show up, and they got their signs, and they're blocking the parade route. Well, there's a drag queen that goes out, this woman they call uh, Mama Tits <laughs> goes out, takes the microphone, and just tears these protesters a new one. And I mean, everything she she says, you know, is is like biblical fact. And you know, she's like, you know, how can you judge us? You know, are you doing this? Are you doing this? You know, these are all teachings that you should be following. You know, if you're not doing this word for word like you claim to do, then you have no right to stand here and tell us you know, what we're doing is sin and what we're doing is wrong. And I saw that video and then it just happened that uh, that's what Dan Savage was talking about at the beginning of the Savage Lovecast. And he was talking about how you know, by protesting that parade, all they did, all the protesters managed to do was to make another drag queen famous. <laughs> So, so he was like, by all means, keep protesting then. He said, because now somebody's going to try and one-up Mama Tits at the next at the next parade. So go ahead, protest the next one. Let's make another drag queen famous. That's and great. I forget, it was over several million views, I think, that video it had on YouTube of somebody just wow. recording, recording her go out you know, to the, the front of the parade and give that speech. Does Dan broadcast out of Seattle? Is that where he lived? I, for some reason, thought that he lived there or... At least his column was in the Seattle newspaper. I could be wrong about that. I want to say he's. It's hard to say. I want to say he's in New York almost. Really? Okay, I, I could be. I could be totally wrong. Now, I, that Seattle. used to be. That was when I first got into podcasting. That was one of my regular shows, and since then, other shows have pushed it out. But maybe I should pick the Savage Lovecast back up because I. I just. I used to love that show to death. Well, of his advice. Because he'll yeah, he'll tell you he'll tell player. you shit just straight out you know whether if he thinks you're wrong then and when people call in asking you know relationship questions or sex questions you know and be it you know regular relationships you know a man and a woman male female or he also takes like uh, uh, gay and lesbian questions advice questions as as well mm-hmm. so you know I guess disclaimer if that's something you you don't want to hear about then. You know, maybe it's not the show for you, but if you have well, an open also mind, also grow then, up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But if you got an open mind, then you know, yeah. check it out. Well, that's been a hot topic in Indiana recently because um, a judge ruled that gay marriage was a okay to do, and so a bunch of couples went and got married at the Indianapolis courthouse, and then three days later, the governor came in and said that no you can't do this and then we're not acknowledging any of the marriages that happened and no you can't have any of the benefits of a married couple and all that. Oh wow. Yeah, but there's another hearing by the Supreme Court which is coming up I think in August sometime. So you know that's going to get overturned because Oklahoma just got overturned. I think Florida just got overturned. It's like these states legalize it and then someone comes in and says no you can't do that but then the Supreme Court gets involved and says well actually yes all of those can. So you know that the Supreme Court will overturn it because, you know, it's you're a citizen of the United States. I don't understand why you don't have the right that other people do. So. Right, right. But, yeah, that's great. Dan Savage is definitely worth checking out, everyone. Oh, yeah. What I else have you got? What, what other highlights you got this week? 
Let's see, I was thinking back, that stuck out. Oh, another thing I wanted to mention to you especially, um, uh, Eric, the Eric Von Radio, the morning show with Eric Von Hessler, he uh-huh. hit episode 100. Oh, there you go. They took a break for the 4th of July, and when they came back, there, there wasn't a show that Monday, and finally put one out on Tuesday. They changed the name of the show from the morning show to just the show. And what they've done is instead of releasing the morning show every single day, they release the show twice a week. So it's an hour and a half on Tuesday and Thursday now instead of, you know, uh, okay. every single day. So I was like, well, that's, that's cool. You know, it's only two days a week I get to listen to it now, but that was helping fill up some of the time on you know Thursday and Friday at work that I didn't have you know anything else to listen to having that to download every day would fill up you know an hour and a half that morning on the way to work and then that morning at work yeah so he added it, they cut out a lot of the news a lot of the political rants and stuff he did out of the show too and he moved that to a separate show so I think he's going to end up having two or three actual shows on the same channel or on the same feed and I haven't listened to I think he called the other one the News Nash or something like that. I haven't listened to it yet. That and that and That's fine because that part of the show didn't really interest me anyway. I just wanted uh-huh. to hear more from him, you know, basically. I mean, he still does news, but he doesn't do, like, political news. Yeah. And he kind of well, let the sports out as well. I just pulled it up, and it's, yeah, the, the second part is called News Nash, and it looks like it might come out. Let's see, it's got only two episodes of the show. And uh, two episodes of News Nash that are out. I think Nash, they do it. Nash spelled G N A S H. News Nash. I think they do it either. I think they may do it Wednesday and Friday, mm-hmm. or maybe Monday and Wednesday. They alternate them now. Yeah. Oh well, keeping on the uh, the marijuana theme, show number two says marijuana related stuff. Yeah, now he's talking about different um different states. The legalization, like in Colorado, they released some stats showing how how much money they had raised for the state for marijuana being legal. Crime was down. And uh, what was it? Something else. Like three different big stats that he had. And he was talking about, why are we not doing this everywhere? If you want to you wanna raise state budgets and keep people out of prison, then well, why are we not doing this everywhere? Well, Washington State and Colorado became legal at the same time, but Washington State's first... Um, actual legal shop opened up this past week or two weeks ago. Too. Did you so see that Washington video online? What's that? Did you see that video online? Uh, what yeah. video? There was a guy that was... He was the first in line. He had camped out. He was going to be the first person in Washington to buy weed, legal marijuana, and he's sitting there, and he does... You know, the news comes out, and they do an interview with him and whatnot. Turns around the next day and gets fired from his job. Oh, on TV. Even you know, though it's by, legal? Yeah, even though it was legal, they just said they didn't want that kind of, I guess, I mean, he didn't say anything about the job or where he worked. Yeah. But I guess he worked in a, a position where people would see his, he, he maybe a face of the company or... Oh, man, that's too bad. Yeah, that's, that's kind of a bummer. Well, hopefully another, you know, a forward-thinking company, an evolved company will step up and say, hey, we like people, you know, who will step up and and say what they're, you know, what they love and what they think about life, and we're not scared of, you know, people being free. Because this really is a, just a freedom issue, just like gay marriage or any other thing. This should be... People are allowed to do what they do as long as they don't hurt anybody else. That's basic. what basic laws should be. Right. This is just a freedom issue. It's, it has nothing to do with druggies and this and that. It's just about freedom. And being in the country of the land of the free, you would think that as long as you don't hurt anybody else, you should be allowed to do what you do. Oh, yeah. You'd think so. Yeah, you would think. Um, I have another uh, feed thing to bring up. Um, on your suggestion last week, you told me to listen to the Giant Bombcast, and I checked out a couple episodes, and I just wanted to let everyone out there know that it is now entering my normal weekly subscription. Oh, all right. I enjoyed... Um, I listened to a couple episodes back where you suggested where Venny was in them, and I enjoyed those greatly. But it wasn't even a host of the show, but the most epi- the most recent episode just blew my mind. I, I really liked Samantha 
on this most recent thing. So I'm going to see if uh-huh. I can look up Samantha on other podcasts to see if I can find her her other appearances. I thought she was great. Oh yeah, she was just uh, she fit right in with the boys, didn't she? She sure did. <laughs> on multiple levels, maybe. <clears throat> You, do you have any other exciting news from your feed this week? No, that was that was pretty much it. You know, just uh, the morning show changing to the show, uh, seeing a video online, and then turn around and have a uh, Dan Savage talk about it. it was pretty entertaining, especially That's since great. I liked the video. And then, oh, oh, one more thing I want to mention. We kind of talked about Weird Al a little bit. Uh huh. He's he's putting out a video. What was it? A video every day for his new CD that just dropped. Did you know that, and I didn't know this until I listened to the, the, the show with Eric Von Hessler, did you know he walked in and found his parents dead? Oh, my God. I had yeah. no idea. I don't, I don't really know much about his background. But just knowing that and then thinking of the kind of music that he makes, I was thinking, wow, that's pretty At dark. At what age? I don't know. Yeah, I, I never did look to see what how old he was, but... His parents had died of, uh, they were at home, and they both died of carbon monoxide poisoning, and he walked in and found them. Oh, well, at least it was carbon monoxide poisoning and not an axe to the head or something like that. You know, It's still super right. traumatic, but holy crap. That is crazy. But Eric says, well, I didn't like him at first. Uh, well, just, I like his music, but now, now I like him even more as a person. Because if yeah, he can keep a positive to. attitude wow. and, and find well, out something like that, then... Yeah, I like Weird Al <laughs> now. He's going to go buy a CD to support him now. Yeah, gee whiz, I did not know that. That's amazing. Hey, do you know by chance what episode of the Sav- Savage Love cast was talking about that uh, the Pride Parade? It's one the the either the most recent episode or the one before it. All right, well, I'll download the most two recent, and maybe that'll spark me to make that um, a regular subscription again. We'll revisit the Love cast. That shows what maybe forty five minutes. They sell a longer show. They call it the micro version that you get for free, and it's forty five oh, yeah. minutes. And if you you pay for the subscription, then they have guests and stuff on. They talk to them. Oh wow! But, but it seems like the the micro version seems to work for me because the forty five yeah. minute commitment is, is is perfect. Yeah. Well, speaking of a commitment, the the bombcast that's a freaking commitment. That's a three hour show weekly, basically. All right. Yeah. Uh, that's you know I might. You know, I'll subscribe to it, but I'm, you know, I might not be able to make it through a whole episode here and there because, you know, I, I like playing video games, and I'm glad they talk about other stuff. But sometimes they go deep into, uh, I wanted to say Dokken. It's not Dokken. What's that that game? <laughs> Dota. Oh, Dota. Yeah, they get they sometimes they go deep into stuff that I have no idea what they're talking about. Right. They'll go, they'll go deep into Dota or uh, Wolfenstein or something. I'm just like I have zero reference to the material you're discussing right now, gentlemen. Or start dropping developer names for different studios, and I'm like, I don't know who those people yeah. are. Talk about the history of a game developer that you know, just I, I've never even heard of the game you're talking about, but right. yet I'm getting a history lesson on it. Well, speaking of Giant Bombcast, do you want to jump into the echo chamber and we'll talk about the shows that. We we'll go into a little more detail on that and talk about what we listened to last week. You can take these shows right to the bank of wise investment in the dunk tank. Did you want to do dunk tank or echo chamber? Sorry. No, oh, my bad. Which dunk one tank. Did we? Dunk tanks where we. Yeah, tell each other a show to listen to. I don't even remember what you told. Was it Giant Bombcast? Is that the one you told me to? Yeah, yeah. Giant Bomb, and I had the Star Wars minute. Okay, yeah. All right, so uh, welcome to the dunk tank uh, segment. Um, That's what I meant to say. Yeah, that's fine. We'll leave all this in. That's good stuff. Uh, this is where we try to introduce each other to a new show that we think the other person might enjoy. And I've already gotten into the Giant Bombcast a little bit and what I thought about it. And, you know, I enjoyed that, and it's now a new subscription. But, Blake, what did uh, what did I sign you for, Dunk Tank? You gave me the Star Wars Minute. Star Wars Minute. And apparently the way Apple on the iTunes store titles things each episode versus how my podcast and app on this Galaxy phone titles things was was two different things. Oh, really? Hmm. Yeah. So I went back and just downloaded the first two episodes of it to check out. Uh-huh. And I like no the setup for this is they're watching the movie Star Wars and they go a minute at a time and they'll talk about, you know, what happens in that in that minute. So basically the first two minutes were just the, the title screen rolling. <laughs> yeah, it's the, those, 
Those are probably the two worst minutes you could listen to because it's just the words scrolling up the screen. But he, uh, I like the way the hosts interact together. And there's some stuff they say, like in the first episode, they mentioned that as that you know the title screen's rolling, that they use the word spaceships, and that never again in Star Wars do they ever say spaceships after that. Yeah, they that's use, a good call. Yeah. They they call them by you know a star destroyer or a tie fighter. They never call them spaceships after that. So I was like, huh, well that was something I didn't you know I had never picked up on, never noticed. So that that was interesting. Uh, like I said, they interact good together. The only problem I have with the show is I like Star Wars. I, I'm dying to see the new ones. I don't know if I want to listen to Star Wars a minute at a time. <laughs> but I like that format of the show. If that same format was applied to something else, perhaps, then I would love it. Well, how about a suggestion of what would work for you hearing one minute at a time? Would it, would a video game minute podcast work for you, or would it have to be a movie? No, it wouldn't have to necessarily be a movie. Just maybe a video, a, a story intensive uh, video game. Maybe the one what was it? Uh, that came out for PlayStation. I couldn't get it for the 360. Uh, the Indiana Jones ripoff one. The um, what's that one? Um, I know what you're talking about. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, they just crap. I'm drawing a blank. They just they released it on PlayStation 3. They remastered it for PlayStation 4. Are you talking about Mass Effect? No. no. no it's, uh, a guy and his daughter and uh, post-apocalypse. Uh, oh. Uh, the zombies got like flower heads of some kind of fungus zombie virus instead of a regular, I don't know. The uh, Last of Us? The Last maybe? of Us. That's it. Was it that That's one? It. Yeah, I've never actually played that game, but I, you know, from the different video game podcasts I've heard, I've heard that is one of the best games ever. So. Right. And, and the story, I watched the opening cinematic to that on YouTube. And just by watching that, I thought, well, I was sad that I couldn't play the game because I had a 360, you know? And I thought, well, if they would just tell that story one minute at a time, go through the story, that, w- that would be something I'd listen to. I didn't realize that that was a PlayStation exclusive. Mm-hmm. And it was a shame because I wanted to play it. Wow. Well, maybe you should broaden your horizons a little bit and not be so exclusive yourself. I know it. I just got it down to PC and... Nintendo 3DS now, and that's it. Yeah, I'm sure you can find a, an affordable PlayStation 3 at this point. Oh, yeah. Or maybe I want to check out now. a 3DS. That's fun, man. I like taking it with me, playing on my lunch break. Oh, that's nice, yeah. So, um, what do you think of Star Wars Minute? They, you'll probably not be a regular subscriber of it, but you did enjoy a couple episodes? Yeah, it seems like what are they, they put an episode out every day or at least a couple times. I know at the beginning they said they were going to do it Monday through Friday. Now, whether they kept up with that, you know, I, I don't know. I'd like to. It's almost one of those things where on days that I didn't have podcasts to listen to, I'd like to go back because I think the show was 10 minutes long. At least the first one was 10 minutes long. Mm-hmm. So I'd like to go back and maybe binge listen to it on days that I didn't have anything to listen to. That way I could just move through several episodes or when they finish – Star Wars are talking about moving on to the next movie. Mm-hmm. Or maybe go back and just binge through the Star Wars season of it. Yeah, that, That's actually kind of how I treat it. You know, on my Thursdays and Fridays when things don't release quite as regular, like most of my podcasts release earlier in the week. But yeah, I'll listen to, listen to We're Alive and Star Wars Minute, or generally I'll listen to a bunch of episodes of those back to back. And yeah, that's that's how I treat it, is how you're describing, just, you know, as a time filler at the end of the week when you've got free time, free space. Well, if you went through and downloaded five episodes, you'd have you an hour's worth of, com- of you know content. If they Do they keep it still ten minutes on the, the newer episodes? Yeah, well, what they do is they get together with a guest and they record, um, you know, an hour and 20 minutes worth of material. Oh, wow. And ju- they just stop every 15 minutes and say, and that's that episode. We'll see you tomorrow. With- and then, you know, they start recording the next episode immediately after. So they all just right. sit down for an hour and a half and record all the stuff for the whole week, but then they just release it in 15 or 20-minute chunks every that's day cool. throughout the week. You know, they they kind of pretend that you don't know that, but they also drop hints all the time that that's what they're doing. Oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah. So I, I, I endorse the Star Wars Minute. People should yeah. check it out if you like the format idea. Yeah, that's one that I want to. Like I said, I'll, I'll end up picking it back up uh, probably five episodes or so at a time and working my way through it. Didn't didn't not like it. Yeah. It's just 
I, I could see myself. I would listen to that, yes, but I would also like to see that format maybe applied to uh, other other topics as well, other maybe movies or. Yeah, well, well, think about that a little bit and get back to us and tell us what subject could be presented in the minute by minute format. Does that? I'm interested to hear what you would think would work well in that format. All right. Did you have anything else on Giant Bomb? Um, I. Just, I really enjoyed it. It's you know sometimes they get a little technical for me because I'm not very overly technical myself, um, and I do enjoy that they get into life in San Francisco a lot. They discuss. I, I assume that's where they broadcast out of, and everyone lives around the Bay Area somewhere. Right. They talk about it a lot, but uh, I I wish that they had a separate feed. They would divide it up, video games, and then the rest of the junk they talk about, because I would totally listen to the rest of the junk they talk about, <laughs> you know, like on a very regular basis. Uh, but as I said, three hours, that's a very, you know, that's a very big chunk of time to be dedicated to that. And sometimes I find myself zoning out during the video game chat. Uh, right. But I do love their the host interaction. They're all, you know, pretty nice to each other, which I don't like it. Like you were mentioning earlier how um, whoever that guy was for the Xbox podcast was ripping on the vowel or whatever his name is. I like it when the hosts get along and they're nice to each other. Even if it's just a shtick being mean... It still makes me uncomfortable for some reason. I don't know why. I always like it when people get along more. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. But, uh, the hosts have a great interaction, and they have great um, you know, topics to talk about all the time. They have lots of food chats and stuff. I like it when they talk about food. And they actually also do a good uh, listener interaction where they get to some emails and stuff like that. So I enjoy when a podcast takes the time to uh, include their listeners. That's always a great giant plus for me. I like how some of their emails, too, aren't even gaming-related at all. It's just people just write in to ask their advice on situations. Well, yeah, this last episode, the, someone just wrote in to ask them about food and have them talk more about food, and I thought that was great because these guys, they're really strange. One, one of the guys had never eaten ketchup. I'm like, are, are you oh, kidding yeah. me? What is up with you? Like, when he gets a hamburger at McDonald's, he gets the same thing every time because he doesn't ever like to stray out of what he knows that he likes. And I can hear that, because when I go to a restaurant, I generally get the same two or three items. That at any restaurant, I'll pick my two favorite meals, basically, and get those two every time. I, I'm not, I don't branch out very often, because my wife and I don't eat out enough for it to be like, oh, well, I'm tired of this. I'm never tired of the things that I like. So, But yeah, they just <laughs> get into like a whole food conversation for the last hour, 40 minutes of the show. I loved that. That was great. And the, the poop in the pool? Would oh, you drink yeah. the water if there was poop in the pool? You know, and I, I'm, a, I'm a chemist too, so that was actually really interesting for that chemist to write in and be like, okay, well, here's the likelihood of this and blah, 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 blah. And actually, the milk you drink in the morning has more bacteria in it than that one glass of pool water would have it with a poo in it. Yeah, what well, was it? an Olympic-sized pool with one, one turd of unknown origin dropped in it. Would you drink the water if you were thirsty? One one glass of the water, and they, what they go on to say in that that letter that, uh, yeah, you're right that there was less bacteria that would be in that one glass of water than is in a cup of milk that you drink in the morning. Yeah, I thought that that was a really great letter. That's super funny. Yeah, they get stuff like that in all the time. Yeah. Well, I will add it to my list. All right. So we'll, we'll see how long it lasts, but uh, you know, as long as they keep the good side talk up. I will keep it in my subscription list. Yeah, they'll have they'll have some you won't like. Like at the end of the year, they do a game of the year segment where each each host of the show you know writes their own column on giantbomb.com and each host will pick their like top 10 games of the year. So, and then they pick one like the podcast top 10 games of the year. So they'll go through a list and they have, you know, several different categories and I think the last five podcasts of the year are them going through those lists. So okay, well, I wouldn't be disinterested in you know the top video games of the year. I, I like hearing about video games. Just sometimes they get a little deep for me. Oh yeah, yeah. But they collect. God, they've collected. Jeff, the usually the main host of the show, from what I understand, he has a garage just full of like old consoles and arcade cabinets and just. All kinds of stuff. So he's like a big collector too. So you'll hear him talk about his collection sometimes. And yeah, some I'd of the love stuff an arcade cabinet. If you could pick any arcade cabinet to have in your house, which what one would it be? What old video game would you like? 
there's two different styles that I liked. Like I remember it, the Pizza Hut when I was a kid. They had one. Hell you sat, yes. You sat down in front of, and it had like four or five different games in it. Do you remember that one? The it Neo like, Geo. What it had like? What was it? Pac Man and. Was it a tabletop? A sit down tabletop? Yeah, style? yeah, yeah, yeah. We had one of those. Ours was only Pac Man. You didn't have different games to choose from at our Pizza Hut. You had a. You must have had the fancy Pizza Hut. <laughs> But yeah, it had, I think three or four different games in it. But as far as like stand-up arcade machine, one game I remember when I was younger that I used to go to the arcade to play was Killer Instinct. And they just released that game, redid it for the Xbox One, and it was like a launch game for the Xbox One. But I spent hours and tons of money standing there in the arcade when I was a teenager playing Killer Instinct. I've heard of that. I don't know if that I've ever played Killer Instinct. That's pretty cool. Is it like a ninja game? Yeah, it was a fighting game, yeah. Yeah. You could play as a dinosaur. Like sort of a street fighter or um, Mortal Kombat, like two people going at it type game? Yeah, yeah, yeah. pretty much. Yeah. It was a real combo-heavy game. Instead of like fatality and stuff like that, and Mortal Kombat would be your the goal to go for. Yeah. Theirs was setting up you know, different button, uh, stick direction, <clears throat> like combinations to chain together these big old combos. Well, have, have you ever seen the movie The King of Kong, A Fistful of Quarters? Yes. I, I would probably make a different decision before i seen that movie, but now that I've seen that movie, I would totally get a Donkey Kong cabinet. That would, oh, yeah. that would just blow my mind. I, I love that movie. I've watched it pretty frequently, whereas my wife is like, this again? You're watching that again? <laughs> I don't know, it's such just a great story of triumph, and it's so inspirational, and I, I, just, I love it to death. What have you got for, for me this week? Um, well, I mentioned it earlier in the show, and I wanted to um, challenge you to listen to at least one, if not a couple episodes of Call Chelsea Peretti. Her most recent episode, uh, she had just gotten back from tour, She's a stand-up comedian who just went on a long tour. She was prepping for her half-hour stand-up special, or maybe it was an hour-long stand-up special. Um, but she just recorded that and got everything out of the way, so now she's back to doing her podcast again. But in the meantime, while she was on tour, she was just writing a short like set of jokes and like funny sentences and sending it into her producer, and her producer was putting it in. You know how um, on Max Level you've got BritBot? Yeah, like, yeah. Like She would just tell her producer to put it into a funny voice on the computer, and it was just like basically a computer reading off these jokes, and you never realize how much inflection a joke needs from a human voice in order to work and to be funny, because when a computer right. reads it, it's, you know, it just doesn't work. It's not funny at all, and that in and of itself made it turn a full 180 and be funny again somehow, just because it was <laughs> ironic that a computer was telling jokes. But those, those were short episodes, only you know less than five minutes, just a couple minutes apiece. But anyone that's, you know, her most recent one is Back to Normal, uh, where it's just her talking to friends, and sometimes a guest will pop into the studio and take calls with her. But any, any episode that's like an hour long or so, that's, that'll be the normal format. So call Chelsea Peretti is something I'd like you to check out this week just to see. I'm, I'm interested to see what you'll think of it. I'm not quite sure that you'll you'll love it, but it is just straight-up comedy and her kind of, like, making fun of and interacting with her fans. If you like fan interaction, oh, yes. this show is, is overly fan interaction. It's all fan interaction. That's all it is. It's just her talking to her fans, basically, from Twitter. So uh, call Chelsea Peretti is my suggestion this week. And cool. uh, what do you have for me, sir? I'm, I forgot to mention... When I was trimming the list, I cut out one show. I didn't cut it out, but I kind of started... I was listening to every episode, and now I started picking and choosing which episodes I want to listen to, and that's a podcast called Stuff to Blow Your Mind. And that got on the pick and choose list because I found one on somebody else's. I was looking at what they subscribed to over Stitcher, and I saw one on their list that looked kind of interesting, so I've been downloading it regularly and listening to every episode, and it's called uh, Freakonomics Radio. Have you ever listened to Freakonomics? Um, I've definitely seen it on the list and stuff. I haven't actually listened to it. The Freakonomics, they take things... The first episode I listened to, they were talking about... They kind of just pick and choose just different weird you know, topics, and they'll have different specialists come in and 
discuss why they're uh, for you know the topic or against it or what experience they have with it. I know one episode they did, the first one I heard was giving out free bread at restaurants. And I know it seems like a weird topic to have, but is the, is the restaurant losing money by letting you fill up with bread before you eat? And then they had some people in there saying, well, no, that if you put that out, it kind of keeps people happy while they're ordering, and then they go home and they'll recommend the restaurant to maybe somebody else in their family or a friend. And then they had a restaurant owner who was like, absolutely, I'm losing money doing this. But people come in and have got up from their table and left because we didn't serve them bread before they sat down or huh. when, you know, before they ordered. So that episode is kind of back and forth. But he also there's also an episode with uh, Kobayashi, the hot dog eating champion. The hot dog guy, nice. And he goes on. They're talking to him about you know, eating as a, as a competition, and we're asking him, well, what did he do to get successful? And he said he watched a couple of the videos from these hot dog eating competitions and thought, well, it's not a matter of how fast I can eat these hot dogs, but what kind of technique I can make out of eating these hot dogs to be able to consume hot dogs faster than everybody else. So each each show is a is a different topic, and each one I found interesting. Last one I think was what a David Lee Roth and King Solomon have in common. Yep. And that, each each episode I've been interested in. I mean the the topics are kind of weird, or the titles can be kind of weird, but the actual topics when they get into it are are pretty fascinating. And it's it's something that's you know not gaming. It's not a comedy podcast. It's almost an educational podcast. Mm-hmm. So. It, it was it was a nice mix, uh, something uh, of a little different variety to listen to during the week. So I've, I've been listening to that, and then you can check out any episode. I just want to see what you think of it. Great. I uh, I they have one that just posted July sixteenth called "Why You Should Bribe Your Kids," and I just downloaded that episode. Right. Yeah, that one's that one's pretty good. I just listened to that one too. Yeah, and I've seen in my Netflix queue. I haven't watched it yet, but there's evidently a Freakonomics. I don't know if it's a documentary or a movie or if it's a narrative of some sort, but they've got a Freakonomics, um, some sort of movie file that I've got in my Netflix instant streaming queue. So uh, maybe this podcast will spike me to uh, or spark me to listen to that or watch that as well. Yeah, you'll find out in that How to Bribe Your Kids how the Freakonomics book they put out a couple books but how they use the Freakonomics book to catch terrorists. Oh, wow. Yeah. When they told me what they did, I was like, wow, that's, that's pretty ingenious. You're fighting terrorism. That's right. But it's, that's it's a cool show, so check it One out. One podcast at a time. So um, Stuff to Blow Your Mind, do you recommend that as well? It's good. It's Again, that was something I wanted to listen to that was completely off topic from everything else that I listened to. I wanted to hear something educational, something I could learn, you know, learning podcast for him. I want to learn something new. And they, they this, have a... Sorry, go ahead. And they have a they have a lot of good episodes, but and the, their, that show is maybe 30 minutes tops, but it's just, I don't know, I just kind of got bored with it after a while. None of the, they had a lot of interesting topics, but after hitting maybe two or three in a row that, while interesting, were nothing that really interested me, per se, mm-hmm. I just kind of got bored with it. I want to shop around a little bit. Is this from the other stuff people? Like they they have uh, stuff you should know and stuff, stuff they don't want stuff you to you know. Should have learned in history class and yeah, it's all in that, that same, same family. Produce, the same family. Right, right. Okay, yeah. I listen. I used to listen to the stuff you should know podcast a lot and the stuff you missed in history class. I used to listen to that as well. Cool. Well, I will definitely check out both of those. And as long as you know, we're assigning uh, two podcasts to listen to. If you want to. Um, I would also suggest listening to the um, I Seem Fun, The Diary of Jen Kirkman podcast. If you, if you have time, uh, this is not an official assignment, but if you're looking to fill some time at the end of the week, uh, go ahead and listen to an episode or two of I Seem Fun because Jen Kirkman's been really hitting the, uh, hitting the nail right on the head the, the last couple of episodes. She's been on fire. All right. You seem to, you seem to be a, a big Jen Kirkman fan. I saw you just had finished a book by her too, didn't you? Yeah, I just finished her book. That's probably why I've been digging her podcast so much recently is because I, I got her book in the mail probably a couple months ago from Amazon, but uh, you know, I've just been putting it off. And then all of a sudden, for some reason, I just before I go to bed every night, I'll read a chapter. Um, and it's just, you know, I think I've gotten more in touch with her 
comedy sensibility, maybe, and that's making me appreciate her podcast all that much more. And I even went through and searched for other podcasts that she's been on, and I brought up the Tofop podcast last episode with Will Anderson, the Australian guy, and she was actually on an episode of two episodes, I think, of Tofop recently. So I listened to one of those, and just her and Will together were really funny and really good, so I enjoyed that a lot. And there was another one that I discovered that she was on, so I will go ahead and listen to that one as well. I've, I've been digging on Jen Kirkman recently. And speaking of comedy books, when I got this nice new microphone, you're, you're hearing my sultry voice speak through. Yeah. Um, at, on the same order, I also ordered the new Todd Glass um, book. It's uh, the, called The Todd Glass Situation. And it's him discussing about why he was in the closet for so long. And he just came out of the closet on the Mark Marin podcast maybe last year, maybe two years ago. Oh, did he really? Yeah, he, uh, wow. he, he made a whole event of it and came out on a, on a podcast. And we've never actually talked about the Mark Marin podcast, but uh, that's one I used to listen to. I don't subscribe every week. But if a, a guest that I like is on, I will listen to that one too. But yeah, so I'm, I'm just now jumping in. I'm about two or three chapters into the, the Todd Glass situation. And I'm enjoying it thoroughly so far. So podcasts and books and all sorts of media are just crisscrossing paths in my mind right now. I'm going to want to put out a call, too. Was it Eric that we got the letter from, the email from, that mentioned his show? Eric and the... Yes, we got, we got one from uh, Eric. Eric Gaines. Please listen to my podcast. Eric and the Legion is the name of the show. Right, and I want to put the call out to people. If you have your own podcast... I would love to hear it. I know there's a lot that we listen to that are either from comics or celebrities of th that have their own podcast, but I would love to hear some more from just two average Joes like, like me and you. Yeah, that would be great. I would love to listen to a couple of Joe podcasts. So if you have, a, if you have your own show, then by all means send it in. I would love to hear it. Yeah, I'm, I'm interested to see how far-reaching our show is to just normal people. And if they do their own show, please let us know, and uh, you know, we'll we'll take a listen to your show. We ain't scared. We'll do it. That's right. We'll hear that yarn and knitting podcast. That'll be fine. Hey, man, I'm still waiting for you to assign me the yarn and knitting podcast. <laughs> I will <laughs> tear that. I will tear that shiz up. What was that episode one? I think I, <laughs> yeah. I mentioned that to you. Yeah, you were saying you you were threatening me. You thought that I would shy away from listening to a knitting podcast, and that's when I dropped the bomb on you and say, hey, brother, I am a knitter heart through and through. That's right. We had a, I know we had had a conversation just online about my buddy Zach that did the Nightcast with me before it came max level. What was it? Something you had put up, something, some podcast, and he asked, you know, well, there's, is there a podcast for everything? And you were like, yeah, pretty much. And he asked about, well, where's the plumbing podcast? And then it was like, boom, you put up one that you found about yeah, plumbing. Two seconds later, I went to iTunes and I searched uh, plumbing and came up with a plumbing podcast. He was trying to say, there's not a podcast for everything. And I said, I just, you know, yes, there is. <laughs> and I actually, you know, when I was, I'm starting, I started my own lawn mowing business and I just kind of was like, oh, I'll see if there's a mowing podcast. There's hundreds of mowing podcasts. Are there really? There are so many yard yard care podcasts out there. You know, you know, like the mowing companies, like some people in their, there must be their media department or their advertising department actually have little hints and tips, tips podcasts. They might not be very long, but they're there. You know, yard tips and, you know, what to do, what not to do, the John Deere podcast, whatever. I was about to say, how do those podcasts go? Are they like, hi, today we're going to review the Craftsman 7.5 horse rear bag and self-propelled mower. And then start breaking <laughs> it down from there? Or how, does, how, how are those? Are they just like lawn tips, like fertilizing? And yeah, some of them are just like the tips about when you need to fertilize and when you need to aerate your soil and like what time of year you want to do this and you want to cut your grass shorter at the beginning of the summer and leave it longer at the end of the summer so the root structure can get low. And, you know, it's basically a, a botany podcast when you get down to it because it's about the physics and chemistry and biology of how grass works, you know. Right. So it's knowledgeable dudes. I wait. I do the exact opposite. I wait till the hottest part of the summer when there's no rain and I drop the deck down as low, to, low as it'll go and just cut that shit down to the dirt. That way it didn't grow back for like I can get three or four weeks out of it without having to mow it <laughs> Yeah, by yeah. myself time. 
They'll they'll tell you that that's bad for your grass, son. Oh yeah, I, I believe it. You know, in the yard it looks terrible, but I'm like, look at that, it's all brown, <laughs> just how I want it. Yeah, I don't have to. I can ignore this for a while now. Yeah. That's right. Oh man, was that everything you got for this show? Hey man, I think we did way more than I even planned on. Oh yeah, we had a we had a, a busy a busy feed section. There was a lot happening that we listened to. Yeah, if we if, if we go every two weeks, every three weeks, there's a lot of stuff I have to get off my chest. No, I hear you. I hear you. You've been holding in all that good giant bomb. You know, we one thing we do is we don't. When you recommend a show to me, or I recommend one to you, we won't talk about it. You know, behind the scenes to each other, we're just like, well, we'll. You know, we'll spill it on the show because there's been times, you know, I've listened to one and told you I've heard it, and you're like, well, just, well, don't tell me. Yeah, just hang on to it. <laughs> just hang on to the show. So that's yeah. one of the, the only things we don't talk about behind the scenes is the uh, the submissions at least to each other. Yeah, and I I will push those off until we actually set a date to record our next show, just so that they're not, you know, like you discussed. The um the Doug loves movies show with the Weird Al that was three weeks ago now for me I've listened to I've listened to a bunch of Doug loves movies since then so I don't remember the ends and outs and particulars of that particular episode episode but uh so when you do assign me a show when we set the recording date I will try to listen to it like the day before or a couple days before just so it still stays fresh in my mind right that was one of those things for me maybe it was just my mindset but you had brought up maybe Doug loves movies. Maybe another show, but some of them you'll kind of go through and just see who they have on as guests. And yeah, if it's yeah. nobody that you know, then you'll maybe skip over that one. For a long time, it seemed like I was in the mindset that I had to listen to every single show, no matter no matter who you know what was on it, who it was. But when it comes to guests, I guess it makes it a whole lot better when it's a guest that you want to hear more from. Exactly. So yeah. So that's why I picked up that extra one with, you know, Doug Loves Movies is still, I'm still subscribed to it. Great. But since the episode uh, with Joey Coco on it, the Weird Al one was the next one that I'd listen to. Okay. So I'm just doing like you did, like you had mentioned, just skipping over the ones that, I know the show format is going to be the same, and now it's uh-huh. just a matter of picking out the guests that I want to hear more from. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah, there's, you know, you don't have to, marry yourself to these shows. You know, Just find people you enjoy listening to, and then you'll probably enjoy listening to them no matter what format they take. So you can listen to them on this podcast, on that podcast, maybe follow them around. Maybe they have their own show, and you'll enjoy that one too. You know, there's one more I want to mention just real fast that I found the other day. <clears throat> I was going through looking for replacements for uh, Major Nelson. Mm-hmm. And I remembered back when I was a teenager how much that I loved like the Jackass movies and the Jackass TV show, Tom Green, just that kind of obscure comedy. Yeah, and yeah. I found that uh, Tom Green had a podcast. It hasn't been updated in almost a year. Yeah, I I was subscribed to that show. I fucking love the Tom Green show. He, you know, it wasn't always funny. He actually got into some serious stuff. But oh, yeah. if those episodes are still up, totally check those out. That show was great. Yeah, the first one, the first one he had Brian Callen on. From the Ten Minute Podcast. Oh, nice! And it was good to hear Brian Callen. They kind of do bits and stuff on the Ten Minute Podcast, but to get to hear him talk about, like, I didn't know he had lived in like seven different countries growing wow. up. He, he's evidently he, really smart too, right? I think I've heard him on interviews. He's he's kind of like one of those Menza kids or something. Oh yeah, he's he's really yeah. intelligent. And to hear him talk about his history and growing up, that was really cool because all I knew of him was just. Just what I hear on the 10 minute podcast. Yeah. And I recognized his name, so I said, well, let me listen to that one. The second one, he had Steve O on it from Jackass. He's also yeah. doing stand up now. Do you know that? Steve O is, he went out with Tom Green, and they started, both of them started doing stand up comedy now, which right. was new to both of them at the time. Yeah. Yeah, he was talking about how they were going on tour together, and it was, that was part of his, like, trying to, trying to straighten his life back out. He had got, yeah, he's totally sober and stuff now. Yeah, got in a lot of trouble, a lot of drinking and drugs and stuff, and got you know said the rest of the guys from Jackass trying to kind of helped him get cleaned up and straightened out, and now he's trying to live a you know a, a different lifestyle. So he's doing stand up comedy. Now he's a hard one to listen to though, just his voice. Oh, his I love his voice. I like his raspy voice. I, 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 yeah, I think it's really cool. Yeah, it's just that raspy voice. I just, I don't know. It sounds like, I don't remember being that raspy on the TV show, but maybe it's just... Oh, he's been smoking a lot of years now. Yeah, 
yeah. bittersweet TV and an audio podcast, I guess, maybe the difference. Yeah. But it, it was good to listen to, yeah. to hear a little more about them. And that show, Tom Green doesn't act anything on that show like he did on the TV show. And he actually makes a pretty good podcast host. So there's no yeah. new episodes, but there was a lot of names in it that I saw that I wanted to go back and check the episodes out. Well, he the reason he stopped doing the podcast is that he now has a late night talk show, and I think it's called ASTV, maybe. But he's he picked up a, a late night talk show is why he's not doing the podcast anymore. But that the late night show, I believe, like will clip little segments from the show, and they have their own podcast, I think. Oh wow! Okay. So if you want to check out more Tom Green, it won't be the full late night talk show, but it is some segments or just some little bits from it or whatever. And it was called ASTV. I think I'm not. I'm not positive about that, but something I'll, like I'll that. I'll Google it after the show, if nothing else. Yeah, yeah. And as long as we're just throwing out one last minute suggestion shows here, uh, do you, did you ever watch Saturday Night Live? Were you ever a fan of Saturday Night Live? Oh yeah, that used to be a a, a staple for me every every weekend at one time. Yeah. Did Did you ever have a favorite weekend update? The news segment host. Oh. Uh, wasn't Tina Fey on it at one time? Yeah, she and Jimmy Fallon used to do it together, yeah. and Amy Poehler and Tina Fey used to do it together. But even before that, do you remember any of those guys? Uh, Norm MacDonald, wasn't he on there? There you time? go. That's what I'm looking for. <laughs> Norm MacDonald Live. Norm MacDonald has a new podcast. Oh, and cool. It, it is really great. If you enjoyed his segments on Saturday Night Live at all, he's yeah. he was always my favorite. Kevin Nealon pulled a really close second. Um, for the weekend update hosts, but Norm Macdonald, I just hold in such a high light for the weekend update, and so I um, I'm sus- I'm subscribed to his podcast as well, and I love it to death. It's it's one of my weekly listens. Is it a is it a weekly show? Yeah, it's a weekly show, and uh, I think that it's like a live uh, talk show on YouTube, maybe, and they just oh, rip okay. the audio for the podcast. But the he did a the most recent one, I think, the at least I've listened to was with Roseanne Barr. Oh wow. And, I don't know, I'm sure if her name is Barr anymore. I don't know what her last name is. Roseanne. Um, but it was great to listen to Roseanne talk. She's still really funny. I know that she's hosting the Last Comic Standing show now, so she gets into that a little bit. And But I really liked Roseanne, the TV show, and I liked her stand-up when I was a really little kid. But uh, it's really interesting to hear some of her stories about back in the day with comedy and stuff. So if you're interested in uh, Norm MacDonald or Roseanne Barr, check out the Norm MacDonald Live episode with Roseanne. Cool. Yeah, my wife got on some benders a couple of years ago, and I've seen every episode of Roseanne now and every single episode of The Golden Girls. Oh, wow. The, oh, those gosh. were two of my classic shows, that and Cheers. That's basically what yeah. I was raised on, man. If any of that stuff was on, you know, you're laying in bed, there's nothing else to watch. If Roseanne, Golden Girls, or Cheers was on, that was something yeah. usually my wife a, was watch. That's great. There's a there's a new Cheers podcast too that uh, oh, really? one of the guy who's who's on Doug loves movies a lot. He's he's obsessed with Cheers and just knows pretty much anything about the show. But he's starting his own Cheers podcast. Um, don't remember what it's called, but uh, <laughs> but check that out. <laughs> Google podcast about Cheers. Yeah, yeah. That's that's something I'd love to go back and rewatch now because I, I remember it's on Netflix it. instant streaming if you have that service. Oh yeah. Yeah, I remember watching it a lot with my dad when I was younger, yeah, and not was, really. It was my dad's favorite. Yeah, not really getting a lot of it. You know, maybe not really a hundred percent paying attention. But now that I'm older, I'd like to go back and check it out again. Yeah, and uh, I like that Cliff Clavin um, is in all the 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 Pixar movies now. Oh yeah, I can always pick his voice out in a second. I'm like, ah, Cliffy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh me. We're blowing this show up tonight. Yeah, all these man. we thought we were going to do a short episode, didn't we? I know it. Well, let's see. I guess I need to shut up and save some stuff for another show. So I, I guess I'm good for this week if you are. Yeah, I am too. It was great to speak with you again, sir. I always enjoy uh, podcasting with you. Oh, yeah, absolutely. All right, well, let's close this thing out for this week. All right, everyone, go check out Eric Gaines' podcast at ericandthelegion.podbean.com. You have been listening to The Earwash Show. For more information on this and the other great podcasts on our network, please head on over to metalsharkstudio.blogspot.com. If you would like to send in a listener feedback email for the wiretap segment or a voice memo audio file for the echo chamber portion of the show, please do so at earwashshow at gmail.com. 
We are Earwash Show on Twitter. Please join the Facebook group, and your five-star iTunes review is always greatly appreciated. Your ears were filthy, but now they have been washed. Metal Shark Studio.